Welcome friends to Farm Fresh Designs 59. Today's video is showcasing some fall decor that I'm getting ready for my vendor booth. The first item is a thrifted frame that I painted with Waverly's moss green paint and I think I put two coats on it. Once it dried well, then I went back with Dixie Belle clear wax and I'm brushing it on and then I will let it sit for just a little bit. Now, even though the can shows up as white, it brushes on clear. Then I come back with Dixie Belle Brown Wax, and I'm actually brushing this on to make sure that it gets into the little grooves on the picture frame. Because there's not a lot of detail on this frame, so I want to take advantage of the little grooves so that it just adds more depth to that frame. Next, I took a piece of foam board that's the same size as the original photograph that came in it. And I am using a stencil from Roy Cycled, and it's a large urn. And because it's so large and I don't want it to move at all, I taped it down to the foam board. And I believe I painted that foam board with Dixie Belle Buttercream first. And so then I took some Dixie Belle French linen and poured some out in a cup. And then I poured some baking soda in it because I wanted it to be more of a textured paint. And then I wanted to, to make it look like concrete when it was all finished. And so I'm just using a really stiff brush to stipple it on. Um, but as I put that paint on my brush, I offload the extra paint onto the little piece of parchment paper on the side. Because if you have too much paint on your brush, then it will go up underneath. And there it is. <gasps> Isn't it just beautiful? Oh my goodness, I just love it. So then after it dries, I want it to have a little bit more texture and I still have some more of that paint. So I just go in with like a little paintbrush and kind of dab it on in some of the spots. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm using this IOD stamp, and it's called Fruitful Harvest. And it's a stamp set that has two different sheets on it. And it's got two pumpkins, and it's got some leaves and some other items. Now, if you've never used a clear stamp before, you want to take some sandpaper that's like 220 grit, and you want to just sand very gently over those stamps go in one way and then the other, just so that the ink will adhere better. Then I took some Apple Barrel Pumpkin Orange Paint and added some antique wax to it and so that it would be more like a pumpkin color. Um, I wanted it to be a little bit darker than what it was in the Apple Barrel little bottle. And then I'm just using a brayer and rolling that on and making sure that if there's any little clear spots, then I wipe that off before I transfer that stamp over onto the piece of foam board. And then I'm going to put that pumpkin stamp right on top of the urn so it looks like that the pumpkin is sitting inside of the urn. And it's a large stamp, so it's a little bit easier than some of the smaller stamps. You want to keep one hand um, stiff and then kind of push around with the other hand. And then these are just some different leaves that were also in that stamp set. And I'm just using some green paint. Now, this is a Zuri mold, and it's called Ornate Leaves. And you can get this from Micah Daughters, um, and I will list it in the description box below. Now, the mold is very detailed, but the mold is made out of um, the silicone, and it's a blue, so it doesn't show up well on camera. So I molded these three different leaves with hot wax, and now I'm going back and painting them, um, one green and one barn red and one brown. Um, but I want it to be more 3D, so I put some Spanish moss on it, and then those leaves were made with hot glue, so I just attached them with hot glue instead of what I normally would use, which would be tight bond. And then I just attach it to that frame, 
and I just think it's beautiful. This is my favorite piece today, um, but I like the 3D effect, and I didn't want to add anything extra to the frame, but look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? I just love it. And I'm thinking, I may have to keep this. This may not go to my booth, or at least for a little bit. Okay, now this is a canvas bag that I bought at Hobby Lobby. And right now they had a big display of them. And I think it was only like $2.99. Um, and then what I'm doing is I'm using the Redesign with Prima transfer, and it's called Sunflower Farms. And all Redesign with Prima um, products can be bought at Micah Daughters, and which will be in the description box below. Now, I did not put a sealer on this fabric. Um, you may could, but transfers typically go onto fabric really well. And I will seal it afterwards. Um, but because this is such a large piece, um, once you start pulling up that plastic when it adheres, with a large piece and you've got a holding on to that extra piece of fabric, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and trim off with scissors that extra plastic just so that I won't have so much to hold on to. But it's got some really beautiful colors that go that will go well in the fall. And this could be something that you could take to the library with you when you take your granddaughters to story time and um, bring our books that we check out with home in this bag. But I just think it's really pretty. And the designs that they have in this transfer, um, I picked out the largest one to put on the bag. But there's a lot of smaller ones too. And it could just be used for so many things. But because I wanted to add a little bit more, this is actually some lace. I think I got it at Hobby Lobby when it was on sale. And I'm using my hotter glue gun um, to attach it. So because it's so hot, then I use a little pink finger protector so that I won't burn myself. And I start putting the lace on the back. And then I work my way all around the front. And when I come back to the back side of the tote bag to finish off putting that lace, I cut it just a little bit longer and then I fold it under and then glue it down so that you don't have any raw edges attached to it. And this is not something that I will wash at all, um, but typically I don't, you know, my tote bags that I have like this, they don't get dirty because it's not something that I carry all the time. But I don't think the transfer would hold up in the washing machine. And then I just took some lace and tied a little bow and attached it to the handle and put a little flower on it. I didn't want to do too much more because I didn't want to take away from the transfer because it's so pretty. So what do you think? Um, are you somebody that likes to have these little tote bags to go along with the different seasons? It's, isn't it just so pretty? And I just love the designs on it. Now, if you're liking this video, make sure to go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I really would like that if you would do that and become part of our family at Farm Fresh Designs 59. Now, this is another little cosmetic bag that I bought at Hobby Lobby. And I want to say this was only like 99 cents or $1.99. And now this transfer is also with Redesign with Prima and it's called Vintage Dream. And it's more of like dusty pinks and dusty purples. And I think these colors just go so well in the fall. And I put this transfer on the front. And this little teeny transfer is part of something that I got at the Dollar Tree. But honestly, the Dollar Tree transfers are great. Um, but, you know, if you see them, you might as well go ahead and get them. Because um, if you go back to get some more, they probably don't have any. And then I use my OD Alpha Belly stamp and put the little stamp up in the right hand corner. And this is just a little bow that I'm making with that wrinkly seam binding. And I actually reach inside of the bag with the safety pin and pin that bow on. And then I glue like a little decorative um, button on the middle. And it's just a sweet little cosmetic bag. But I like this a lot. Now, this is a very simple project. 
in one of my previous videos, I had a wooden tote and I took several different pieces of wood and decorated them differently. And then I attached them to the wood tote with little Velcro dots. And I think I told y'all then I was probably going to make some more for future seasons. So this is one of those that I'll Velcro on. And this is one of those little plastic bubbles that you might use, especially at Christmas time. You might put a little bit of snow in it, and it looks like a little miniature snow globe. And so there was some little fall leaves that I got at Hobby Lobby, and I laid them down, and then that little bubble has some tape on the back, and I just pushed it on, and I just think it's really neat. And then I am just put the Velcro dots back on the back and just attach it to the wood tote. Now, this next project is so simple. This is just a little silver tray. Um, it wasn't real silver, and I painted it with Dixie Belle Slick Stick um, because if not, then if I painted it, then it would chip off real easy. And then I'm just using Dixie Belle Buttercream to paint it on. And after it dries, then I seal it because I'm gonna put a transfer on it. And this transfer I've had ever since last summer, so I don't remember where I got it, but I'm sure it was off of Amazon. And it's just a simple little orange pumpkin. And I didn't do anything else to it. Um, I might could have added some ribbon around the edges or maybe even put some stamps on it. But sometimes it's okay to just have simple little projects because I will be putting something on this tray in just a few minutes. But what do you think? I'm using a lot of the traditional colors today. Now, let me tell you what I'm doing here. This is just a little styrofoam bowl, and I put some spackling in it that I got at the Dollar Tree. And I'm using some Waverly Antique Wax, just mostly because I need it for the brown color. And I'm making some faux hot chocolate. Now, if you'll notice on the table, there's three little cups, and I think they might be considered espresso cups, but you can find them at Hobby Lobby, um, and they have them for all different seasons. And so I took some tissue paper, and I stuffed it down in those little cups just so that I wouldn't have to use so much spackling. And then I'm just going to kind of push it into those cups. Now, I'm not going to show the reveal because I want to show you what I'm going to do next, and then they will go together. So, once again, this is that Apple Barrel Pumpkin Orange paint, and I mixed some of the um, Antique Wax by Waverly in it to give it that darker color. And stirred it up really good because then I get those sponges at Dollar Tree, and they're the sponges um, over where the mops and things are. And they are not the ones that have the scrubby part on it at all. Those are the two colors I used. Now, I'm going to cut these sponges in the shape of a triangle. So, you only get one triangle per sponge. And these are really soft little sponges. They're not hard yet. And I'm just using a little sponge um, brush to put it on. And I put it on really thick because I don't want to have to go back again and paint it. And I paint the top and the sides, and I paint the back part of it. And it's going to look like a little slice of pumpkin pie. Now, this was a super messy project, and I did several different slices of it. So you can imagine that by the time I was through with all of it, I was a hot mess, and my hands were all orange. Um, but I needed it to dry really well because I needed it to be kind of hard and crunchy when it was over with. So it's hot in North Carolina, so I just put them, my little pumpkin slices um, on a tray and put it outside to where it would dry quicker. And then I, there's a part on it that I don't show you, but let me tell you what I, I do with it. Is after they get really dry, then I take some burlap fabric and I lay it down, and then I go ahead and take some tight bond glue and put that on the back side or the bottom side of the pie slice, and I let it set up for just a little bit, and then I go back and I trim around it. Now, I take that burlap 
and I pull it up to the back of the slice so that it looks like the crust. And I want to make sure that it stays on real well and doesn't fall back. So I use some little straight pins to hold it on until it the glue sets up. And then I use some more spackling with some um, white paint and put it in this pastry little container that I do not use it for um, baking at all. This is only when I make like faux food. So I do the spackling with some little white or some cream paint and stir it around and it looks like whipped cream. And then I just sprinkle some cinnamon on it. And yes, this is real cinnamon. Um, and it just kind of gives it a good smell. And especially after I did this to the other day, my craft room smelled really good. And these are all the little pumpkin slices that the burlap has already been glued to the bottom. And then I put like a little glob of um, the pastry stuff on it to make it look like um, it had, you know, like some whipped cream on top of the pumpkin pie. And I put some cinnamon on it. Now, for some reason, that spackling, once it dries and it's on top of that sponge, it it sticks to it, and I didn't have to go back and put any glue on it. And then I've got those three little cups that look like hot chocolate, and I put a little bit of that pretend whipped cream on top, and on one of them, I didn't put cinnamon because I wanted it to just stay plain. And so um, years ago... Um, when I first started watching YouTube videos, um, I was watching Bargain Bethany, and she made some um, faux, like, ice cream sundaes for Valentine's Day, and oh my goodness, it was so much fun to make all that, and I actually kept it for several years, and every Valentine's Day, I would pull it back out, and that was when I first started making faux food. Um, now, if you've got small children or you've got small grandchildren, you're going to want to probably put this up high so that they won't think it's real food um, and, you know, so that they won't try to eat, in, eat any of it. So here's my little cups of hot chocolate and that little plate with the green pumpkin on it. I found that at Hobby Lobby and the cup and the little saucer, they weren't together, but I thought they went together because of the green. So what do you think? And have you ever made faux food before? But look real close, you can see that burlap on the bottom that makes it look like crust. And you could add several layers of burlap if you wanted to, if you wanted it to look a little bit thicker. But at our house, we don't necessarily eat pumpkin pie, we eat sweet potato pie. So friends, we are already at the end of the video today. I hope you've had fun. And I've ho had hoped that you've had gotten some great ideas and some inspiration as we like travel all into the fall season. But because I have a vendor booth, you know, I have to go ahead and start getting ready before the fall season because I need to have it ready for when we start to decorate our booths. So leave me a comment. Tell me what was your favorite piece today. Um, without a doubt, the urn and the pumpkin's my favorite. And then I think the tote bag's my next favorite. But what was your favorite? Um, I just, I like all of them. And I made some complicated projects. And I made some simple projects. Um, because sometimes it's just okay to make a simple project. Not everything has to be complicated. But I really like it. Now, my next video will be some more unusual fall decor. Um, it will be coming out this week. So I hope you'll be watching for it. And then next week, I'm going to head back to my shabby chic style and make some more projects. And I've already got my ideas together. So you'll have to make sure you come back for that if you like shabby chic. And what do you think about that little bubble on it? I think it's kind of neat. And um, be watching for some of those at Christmas time. Um, it actually came with different kind of shapes in this little package, and one of them was Christmas trees. So I'm excited about using those for Christmas. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, I just appreciate you so much. So make sure that you like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I hope that you have a great rest of the week. And I'll see you in my next video.